Hello everyone and welcome to Jump Up Supercast, the only podcast where Noah leaves and comes back within two weeks. <laughs> I'm your host, Muzzy, and uh, joining me today we have uh, Brandon. It's also the only other podcast where we just randomly switch hosts sometimes, you know, it's all good. We just feel like it, you know. Uh, Saf? I'm expecting Will to return in two weeks as well, given the thing. <laughs> uh, Ills? They can't quit us. They need us. Noah, I'm back, baby. We should clarify for a week only, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and William, our usual host. What are you doing here? Not Bet you hosting. thought I was dead. Listen, yeah. once it's Muzi's birthday, and I said, Muzi, you get a host. Hold That's on. the exact reasoning. It's not that I'm dying of allergies because <laughs> I'm a weak-willed individual. Uh, just to be clear, it is not my birthday. I just want to make that abundantly clear. Wish him a happy <laughs> birthday on Twitter, please. Well, no, no, don't. So, I never wish him anything happy. No, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's I, I would prefer birthday. it that way, honestly. Uh, so, how are you guys doing today? Besides not wanting to wish me well, uh, how's it going? We're doing good now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Feeling happy uh, so, now that you're hosting. Oh, thank you, Saf. Oh, wow. uh, Hold on, I'm so your idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. S- save it for when Will's not here, okay? Well, happy to he does it. the same thing to me on the game club. He kisses my ass. Uh, <laughs> but true. we have a lot to talk about this week, believe it or not. Uh, Will decided to hand it over to me on a pretty busy week, because if you don't know, GDC was this week, uh, the Game hey, Developer Conference. Mm-hmm. So, lot, yeah. lot to glean from that, but the biggest thing, objectively, right is there was a new platform announcement uh i no say way. platform because not really a console uh you probably already heard yeah. google google has their new stadia platform coming it sure. is a streaming service uh but it plays triple a games including games like assassin's creed odyssey and doom eternal uh, plays on any device that uses chrome so that whether that's your phone your laptop your MacBook, whatever, uh, or a Chromecast. And basically the concept is you can, uh, with the click of a button, you're immediately just streaming a game, playing it on your browser uh, in in 4K, 60 frames per second with HDR, Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a fast enough internet connection. (laughs) So (laughs) So it's all up to your internet service provider. Yes. In some ways, yeah. (laughs) So truth be told, there's not much to talk about here, but I do want to touch on a few points. Uh, First of all, uh, I mean, so we should say, there's a second conference coming in summer where they plan on detailing more games and pricing structures and all that. So that we really don't know a lot here, right? Yeah. I mean, they did this at the Game Developers Conference. It was like a publicly viewed thing, but it really felt like it was speaking to people that they want to be like developing on the platform. Yes. And it feels like the second conference is going to be more for the consumer side of things, which is where we land. And like, What's you know, the- there's precedent for this too, right? Like when the, when we first saw the Switch... I mean, we knew that the Switch existed, but we, we we didn't really know much about it, right? We didn't know price, we didn't know games, we didn't, we didn't really know anything until the conference. We knew Zelda was on it. Uh, we just knew, essentially, yeah, <laughs> Zelda was on it, and that's pretty much it. And that it's a hybrid. So, same thing here. We know it's a streaming service. Uh, we know that if you... We, so, th- this is interesting, because Google is trying to market this as the future of games, right? Yes. Um, okay. And, I, you know... We can debate that here. Uh, <laughs> sure, yeah, I but definitely. It, yeah, it's part yeah. of the future. I think is the way I would phrase it, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I mean PS sure, Now has yeah. been here for a while, and we all know the service isn't the greatest. <laughs> so, uh, and I mean, so I think, I, I, to be fair here, I do think we can give credit that like Google has more infrastructure than Sony. They can they can yeah. make this something more viable. And me personally, I I tried the beta Project Stream a few months back, played Assassin's Creed Odyssey on Google Chrome, and to be fair, it worked really well. Um. However, yeah. uh, I have really good internet, so you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the thing. gonna be. Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be my main point of like whether or not this is actually going to be uh, uh, yeah. the future of gaming is how yeah. accessible it is to people with uh, a poor internet connection. So, no, like, so can like, you go to a rural area that doesn't have much in the way of internet and they can play games right? right or is it just gonna be just? So I want to touch. I want to touch on. So let, let's go point by point. So first of all, I think part of it being the future of gaming is it's platform agnostic, right? So let's talk about that mm-hmm. because I do think that is actually very fascinating and kind of represents a big shift from where we are right now, right? Because right now you have to own specific devices to play 
certain games, right? You want to play Super Mario Odyssey, you need a Nintendo Switch, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Google... It's it's the same uh, progression as, you know, the video industry, right? I mean, sure, yeah. Have, I mean, so yeah, VCRs let's talk about and that, right? Bullshit, and then now you have Netflix and Amazon and all the shit that you, you do it, it, digitally. Yes, that is Gaming true. Services. That is very true. But also, I mean, streaming a movie is a lot less taxing on you. No, than yeah, than streaming definitely. Video game, so. And that's a lot of um, the hesitation what I have with this. Like, I don't think my internet's going to be able to handle yeah. streaming. A, a I mean, they sort of said that, like, the, the, the floor for it was 15 megabits per second. Yeah. And and if you're getting above that, then you're, you know, like, it goes up to, like, 4K, 60 Supposedly FPS. the ideal, like, you can get anything you need. Well, 20 megabits per second is their recommended. 15 is the minimum. And then 30 is where you will uh, theoretically be able to do 4K, 60 with no, uh, no problem at all. Um, so another thing that they're promising, though, is that it seems that the way they're prioritizing things, because obviously the game feel is very important, right? In playing a game. It's very different from a movie because you have to deal with things like input lag and whatnot, right? You need a certain level of responsiveness. So uh, Google Google says that if you have slower internet, they're not going to sacrifice on the input lag necessarily, but rather the resolution will drop. And that is something I actually witnessed firsthand playing this. Yeah. Uh, what 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 will happen dynamically? You'll be playing the game, and like certainly, you know, like when a YouTube video lowers its quality to like three sixty p, and it gets mm-hmm. all fuzzy. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, that's their solution to when things like that happen. It's okay, good. so you had good internet, but you still encountered that. Correct. I mean, not... Granted, it was a beta, and you know. Well, no, was... didn't you? That was when you were doing the the like badder the worst version because you tried it on one that was like yes. 15 megabits right uh, yeah and i tried it on a slower internet connection mind you but like not not my usual internet connection but but still it was like still pretty decently fast um yeah. but That's you know compromising my eyes. but like it was and they've already said we've already improved it a lot since the beta they had some charts to show uh they actually went to yeah. digital foundry and allowed them to do some tests and it proved yeah like yeah this is already a lot better than project stream was a few months to push back, back on a little thing that got spread around that that's just sort of inaccurate, there was a thing where there's like 166 milliseconds of delay, and people said, this is prohibitively bad, this is yada yada. But in Digital Foundry and their own testing said that if you were playing with a wired, with a wireless controller on an Xbox One X hooked up to your TV, it also had 166 milliseconds of delay. So in there, I mean, it was, con- it was in a semi-controlled environment, but it was basically the same level of latency that you would get just from having a wireless controller on a console. Oh, yeah. So people are just like scared because it's a big number. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Like, without, I mean, I think like, context. I, it, it's yeah. hard to believe that this stuff is real. I guess in a lot of ways, right? Until you get your hands on it, until you try it for yourself. Um, uh, I mean, in this day and age, I can. I feel like I can believe it. And, and uh, if any company has the capability of like entering the race with something like that, it's definitely Google. Like, yeah, yeah, they I mean, have the. They can do it if they really put their minds to it. In terms of the three companies really, well, that have the most cloud infrastructure, it goes Amazon, Google's third, and in the middle, Microsoft. Yes, which I mean that transition true. to Microsoft. But like, that's, so hold on, Niels, you had a point. No, I was just gonna say that's true. But Google has a has a, a history of overpromising. Right. So sure. I, I don't know if sure, I Sure, but I think I think it's different to have three people working on a messaging app and drop that app versus hey, we're investing millions and millions of dollars yeah. into I a mean, new gaming section, you know. That's I, just, that's No, I'm I mean, I'm hopeful. I want them to succeed cuz I like the idea, but I'm still mm. very cautious. Yeah, yeah there's, I think just the idea of cabin. not being limited by your hardware, right? Being able to run yeah. a game more that's probably on par with what the next xbox and next playstation will be but just on any device with chrome i mean that that sounds fascinating right yeah that, yeah if it actually i'm really curious to see where that would lead us if that is a success and it actually works as promised mm-hmm. that would kind of put the other companies that are developing consoles in a very dangerous position it would be it would be very strange because i mean i sort of two thoughts on it like one the People ask, like, are you going to get Stadia? I've seen that say, said online. Like, the weird thing is, like, I have a PS4 controller and a Switch controller. I have a Chrome installed on my computer. I have Stadia. That's it. I did it. Right? Like, if you have Chrome installed, you're you're basically there already. And so, like, in that way, it's weird because you still think of, like, getting the thing. Like, because we have just for 
the entirety of video game existence, you have the console. That's the barrier. And so it's weird to finally have that be gone. But also, I mean, because there is that with it launching successfully, right? But also I think that they can, it doesn't need to have the biggest launch much, month ever, right? Like Chrome yeah. as a browser didn't premiere to be the biggest internet browser in the world. It took like three years, right? And, and just and quietly it, it caught up. I want to touch on something you said. Uh, I mean... The barrier of entry, like you said, it's just owning a controller, not even their own controller, which, by the way, there is a Stadia controller that they're selling. Uh, mm. you, you will need it if you want to play on a Chromecast, if you want to play on your TV. But if you're playing on PC, uh, you can uh, just use any controller you have, including Xbox, PlayStation, Switch controllers, right? Um, I mean, so I think the barrier of entry here, very low, right? So it's not like you have to get Stadia, right? All it takes is one game that they have exclusive that you're interested in for you to try it out. Right, like it, it's yeah. it's it's not asking for much for you to be able to try that. So mm, I think that's yeah. fascinating in of itself. Yeah. Uh, I, I see I'll... myself as a, a, the kind of guy who is going to use it to play whatever they have as exclusives. But other than that, I, I but otherwise you would prefer sure. to use yeah. And yeah. and so, so one are they going to have is... only exclusives? They're going to have all their like third party games as well. So, so what Google state what Google's promising for Stadia is that they will have uh, their own exclusives. They they actually. Uh, started their own development studios. I forget the name exactly. Stadia, whatever, something. Yeah. Uh, so they're making first party games. It's being helmed by Jade Raymond, who used to work at Ubisoft and EA. Uh, she's uh, notable in particular for something like Assassin's Creed. Yeah. Um, and and they will be funding exclusives from other people. We've heard rumors about Outrun Three. Uh, you know, Sega. Or just in general, stuff. like. That they've been um, doing outreach to like Japanese companies and to yeah. indie companies. Like they're they're hitting a lot of different markets in a way that you maybe wouldn't yes. think when you mm -hmm. hear like Google's talking to people. And then they also want to have the multi platform games though, right? Like I said, they already promised right out Doom the bat Eternal. Doom Eternal will be on there, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they want basically in a lot of ways you can think of it as pretty much any multi platform game that comes to Xbox One, Google probably wants on their system as well. You know, uh, yeah. their platform. Uh, in addition to their own exclusives. So that's Google Search. And the one last thing I just but, want to touch on is... Oh, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, what are they developing for? Like, we have no idea what the... They you know. showed off the... It's the GPU. The, it's, they partner with AMD on it. And it's it's a new... I forget the name of it. But essentially, it's like... It, on the market, it would be too expensive to like put in a console was the whole plan. and beca yeah. But because they made a partnership deal, they got it for cheaper. And so... That's what you're developing on, and they, that's the stuff that they showed to the developers at the actual GDC after the conference ended. Yeah, there is a dev kit. There is a dev kit like there would be for an Xbox or for a PlayStation or whatever, you know? Okay. Um, and then I think, I think, so I think Stadia and I think cloud stuff in general is stuff that is maybe set to take off when 5G comes around, right? Yeah. I think that 5G is going to be a big deal because that's going to be, it's promising, you know, 10 gigabits per second uh download speeds for mobile data you know that's i mean that's insane that's right and i think that's gonna change the game in a lot of ways and i think that's what's gonna make streaming and whatnot a lot more viable so yeah um uh, that's so it. it probably will come down to basically which exclusives do you want to play so like nintendo will still have its strong exclusives ps4 ps playstation xbox so chrome yeah. even if it gets like a hit and is really successful I guess the other co the companies still have like their own thing. Yes, yeah. which leads me to transition on that point. Real, uh, Microsoft they're doing their mm -hmm. own cloud stuff, but they have something else to say about it. So where whereas Google's Phil Harrison is saying that uh, Stadia is starting a shift to an inevitable streaming only future and the death of consoles, uh, <laughs> Microsoft is out there saying at GDC, hey. Uh, we're doing cloud stuff. We're doing xCloud. And, and they did a panel and there was a lot of developer interest, mind you. Um, but for us, streaming is a thing to uh, to get consumers who are not already playing on consoles. But while we're very excited for streaming, we think dedicated hardware is going to be the best place to play games for years to come. Uh, and we, we, we have a continued interest in doing dedicated hardware. And something of note that he said is we're very proud to have the most powerful system right now, and we plan to continue doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so clearly, Love clearly it. one, Microsoft knows how to message to gamers, right? Which is <laughs> hilarious. That's me. Uh, this is hilarious, though, because at the beginning of the generation, Microsoft is notably 
awful at messaging, right? The Xbox oh, yeah. One was a PR disaster. Yeah. They you took ha- a 360. Oh, jeez. Just no, out of here. No, they did a 180. <laughs> they did a, and, and, a 360, and they'd be one the same thing again. Whatever, all right? I wanted yeah. to make the pun. You <laughs> work, right? Get, Get, the Get this man out. Exco- the best this man thing, out. though, really fast, Moose, is that you is that the guy, one of the people that was at Microsoft during all, that bad, during all the bad messaging during that time, and also Sony during the PS3 era, Phil Harrison, yes. the guy who gave the very bad answer on how <laughs> dread it run from it streaming will still arrive. Like, it's like, Phil don't Harrison say that. Not good at PR. I think we can say. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, so Microsoft, let's talk about Microsoft real quick. So clearly xCloud is a big thing for them and they're, they, they're heavily investing in it, right? Phil Spencer uh, gave an answer to someone, uh, I think Windows Central or throughout one of those uh, Microsoft websites. Here's Windows saying, Central, yeah. Um, yeah, like we feel uh, it's very interesting that a competitor is coming in and it feels in a lot of ways gratifying that, hey, we are on the right path if someone else is doing this. Uh, so, yeah, xCloud is going to be a big deal for them. But that said, they still are very interested in dedicated hardware. They still want to make Xbox consoles. Um, yeah, I, think, I mean, Mike, so- I think that's more like a, of a point of like managing expectations. They knew they weren't going to win the hardware, uh, you know, race. So now they're like, fo- you know, shifting focus to, you know, putting their games as many platforms, but, you know, still having that that platform there. So that's why they, you know, detracted from the hardware specifically, but they're still. Yeah, but you know, but, but it's, it's, it's nice to hear Microsoft say, hey, we dedicated hardware is still our focus and we still want to make the best dedicated hardware we can. Right. That, yeah. yeah. I mean, that but, makes puts my mind at ease because, you know, I that's my preference, you know, so it's it's great to hear. Going, going off the back of uh, it was this comment. A mutual friend of ours, Kevin, made this uh, joke that I find absolutely hilarious. Who? Uh, the producer of the show, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> the, I don't know who that is, um, but, right. but what he did, uh, but the comment was basically, it's like, I'm surprised to see Microsoft doing what people expected Nintendo to do the last generation, which is kind of like do more third party support, which is kind of true in this sense. Sure, and we can talk about that, but uh, I, I think it, this comment in particular is interesting because it's, it's, it's them saying, hey, we still have a place for our consoles, yeah. right? Like, it's not... Uh, and also saying that they're like... I mean, I imagine most con... Microsoft is aware of what Sony's doing and Sony's aware of what Microsoft's doing behind the scenes, right? Like, the yes. industry's... You know, it's not like it's some, like, secret, like, you know, so Cold War thing. And, like... But Microsoft, they're saying, like, we know we plan to solve the strongest thing. Like, that worked for us this gen. We want to... Like, we want to both have this thing that's, like, the lowest barrier of entry possible, which is if you have a phone, then you can play our games. But also this thing that that's the premium product that that will play games the best consistently i think that's oh. an interesting place to be in wait so you yes. so you're thinking that it's going to be one or the other there's no in between like it's not going to be like an xbox no no, no. Xbox it's one. it's like both he's i mean that, that, that's what that's what microsoft's saying though. Like that's they're, what they're, they're saying. interested in doing both you know they're interested in um so i i want to move forward i guess so microsoft also has there's a lot to talk about with microsoft at gdc uh, mm-hmm. a lot of interesting stuff uh busy boys so not only are they doing cloud stuff, right? Not only are they doing uh, their own Xbox hardware, uh, but they are very interested in, and I think this relates to xCloud in a lot of ways, um, doing cross-platform stuff, right? Uh, so before we get to the big thing, which uh, obviously, uh, at GDC, they have been demoing an SDK, a software development kit, for developers to use that essentially, no matter if you're on Xbox, uh, PC, mobile, or Switch, uh, developers who use this SDK will have uh, a service to be able to use where they don't have to do anything themselves to be able to implement things like voice chat, uh, including party chat. Um, You can do uh, achievements, you can do uh, leaderboards, all that kind of stuff, all rolled into this one service. Uh, Basically, you sign into the service. Currently, it only supports being able to sign into Xbox Live, but they straight up said, hey, we're going to allow more account systems for you to sign into this through this system with uh mm-hmm. so basically basically they are opening up the barriers to even stuff like party chat right and stuff and like the, achievements and the barrier of entry is really low right like essentially yeah. like this this doesn't just apply for like oh nintendo could use it to finally have party chat and mario Kart, yeah. but like indie developers is like no, the like, main a, thing they're speaking a, a, to. This, this software development kit is like uh anyone can use it you yeah. know uh it's so it, cool yeah uh they're basically I don't know for free, but I, I like the I, the barrier seems to be incredibly low, low for you to be able to yeah. use the system, um, and that's cool. I mean, that's that's a good thing, right? Uh, yeah, that's mm-hmm. a very smart move, I think. Yeah, uh, and then so let's get to the big one. 
So, Nintendo had a Nindies showcase on Wednesday. Yeah, brother. March, what was it, 20th? Yeah, March 20th. Yep. Uh, so, uh, the way we're going to talk about this, I'm going to go through, I'll talk about the opening, and then I'm going to list each game, give you a lo- little blurb. If you want to talk in more detail about a certain game, say something. Speak up. All right. Okay? All right. Uh, that way, uh, we can cover whatever we want from there. We should okay. all have a buzzer that we can yeah. hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, One day, uh, we'll have a But we will board. definitely be talking about both the opening and the closer of this oh, Nindy Showcase. Uh, because, so right off the bat, they open with Cuphead. Uh, Cuphead mm-hmm. is coming to Nintendo Switch. They Sweet. straight up say, hey, uh, thanks to our friends at Microsoft for letting this happen. Uh, yeah. super, <laughs> in an official super Nintendo crazy. stream. I know. Uh, and, yeah, so, and at GDC, the developers at Studio MDHR are saying, hey, uh, Microsoft are the ones who, who contacted us asking us, do you want to put this on Switch? So this was Microsoft being proactive about this, which is fascinating. So awesome. it, as, as we know, Cuphead was um, an exclusive to the Xbox One and PC. Uh, Microsoft had heavy involvement in it, but it's now on Switch. Yeah. What a crazy thing. Yeah. Let's talk Man, about that. Fucking cool. fantastic. I love it. What a weird intro, by the way. The guy with the mask and the milk. I was like, "What?" And then, oh, cu- yeah. and like, I was, I was like, "Is this a wee happy few? What is this?" And then Mugman and Cuphead pop out. But like, and it's funny you say that because that intro section in particular, they said, "Hey, we looked at." I mean, this just goes to show the the detail that Cuphead in in everything about it, in its design, in its marketing, and everything. They went and looked at like '30s humor, uh, and 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 they that's kind of what they based up they were that going little. For it advertisement on that's cool so, yikes pretty cool yeah uh, i mean I cuphead's huge. a scary fucking place <laughs> <laughs> but i mean cuphead's huge right like it's it's worth mentioning that like it sold i think didn't it pass like three million on xbox and pc when it first yes. came out yes, it did. and and then you know and it's it has this weird like staying power of like a youtube community like it, and so it, you know it's a situation where it's going to do you know, there's a certain echelon of indie games that just continually stay towards the top of the charts on the on the yeah. Switch. It, like it got like a weird like like cult following, but like in the weird like Undertale kind of fan base. Yes, that's yeah. what I was thinking of. Yeah. yeah, people kept making like all these like comics and stuff about the characters and all this lore that didn't really exist, but uh, people just like felt. I mean, you go into a hot topic or you go into a GameStop, you'll probably see Cuphead merch. You know, yeah, like this of, game yeah. is huge. Uh, I never go into either of those things. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you, I worked with I worked at middle school, so I saw a lot of Cuphead like lunch boxes and stuff the kids would bring. But I mean, this is a big deal, right? And this was one of the best games of twenty. 17 uh and it's yeah. out and it's i mean it translates super well to the switch right like i mean that art style is something you want to see on the switch screen right yeah and it's, it's so easy to, just to pick up and play you can play multiplayer with your friend on the go it's great mm-hmm. yeah wow. i think noticing at least for me when i was watching the trailer it looks like some of the grainy filter was missing it, it looked like cleaner than i remember because sure playing cuphead i remember it being more grainy the crazy you know, thing like, i mean well the thing is the game's like fully done and like <laughs> Like when it went live, there was like five hundred people there. Like, here's us playing an hour of Cuphead on Switch just on our like our on our like press kit, and you're like, that's. But I mean, they had side by sides, and the thing is, it's functionally identical in performance, and it looked the same to me, grain filter wise, when they had them side by side. Oh, okay. So like maybe it's just a memory thing, but uh, I mean, it's weird. People thought like, is it gonna run weird? But like when you think about it, it's not like Cuphead's like an intensive graphical no, game no. yeah like, it's not like taxing it's, it's beautiful but it's not like yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and which is to say i mean they were able to get this running at 1080p 60 frames per second in dock mode and 720p mm-hmm. 60 frames per second in handheld which is the native yeah. res that's exactly what it, yeah so it runs incredibly well on switch uh i mean it's th- it took them forever to make not because the game was like like uh you know graphically like killing the system it's just because they had to they hand drew everything they put so much effort into the game mm, and they even added extra stuff that they weren't going to originally add so yeah. yeah the run and gun levels uh yeah they added yeah. i mean yeah i mean basically the entire scope of the game changed in the in the few years we saw it right yeah, yeah. yeah. so it's uh yeah I don't but know, yeah cuphead's not, a huge deal and it's huge to see it on switch and yeah. you know a huge step there. forward in the whole microsoft nintendo stuff and and in general it's just another fantastic game on the platform yeah. so that's really yeah nice. it's amazing if you've never it. played it just please yeah i haven't so played it yet i, I want to play it i love that game uh it's one of my favorite games so go ahead and play it please uh so the next game they showed was uh red lantern 
So Red Lantern is a game kind of like Firewatch. Uh, it's a very narrative-driven game. You're you're in the Alaskan tundra. You are uh, you have your five sled dogs with you, and then they show a terrible scene of a dog dying, and and then literally the next scene they show you're only being driven by four sled dogs, and it makes you sad. Uh, <laughs> um, I want to buzz yeah. buzzing in. Uh, Two things. Ashley Birch does the voice acting. Ashley Birch is great. Oh, she did nice. Aloy in uh, Horizon, and she did uh, Max, not Max, she did Chloe in uh, Life is Strange. She's very good. Oh, she's Wait, sorry, um, yeah, I, and it's funny, because like, I don't usually recognize voice actors, right? But I uh -huh. immediately, I was like, oh my god, that's Ashley Birch. I know this. Uh. <laughs> so but just... it is weird that the like the like official pitch for the game is that it's a roguelike survival horror story based game and you're like how yes. does the roguelike fit into the rest of that because like roguelikes like rent like like randomly generated levels run based type mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. which i guess is like if there's just a chance that you die in the middle of the iditarod and you have to restart is maybe the way that that works but well, i guess i guess the path changes like every time sure am i gonna have Which to see cool. dogs die multiple times in this game well, get get over. i mean you're running the risk of it when you go out there, you know. You and the dog, you both know. Uh, uh, digital puppers. It's just digital. I don't really care for animals anyway, <laughs> so it should be a fun game. Saf, you're part of <laughs> can, can I play as Cuba Gooding Jr.? This is why Saf didn't donate to the charity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, next game was Overland. So, Overland, you're in a post-apocalyptic road trip. Uh... There's crazy weapons, and so it probably is the creator of Cannibal. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, anything? I don't know if anyone has anything to say about that. This is the one that's like a strategy game. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, it's a strategy yeah. game. Yeah, it's, it's pretty strategy interesting. Game. It has mm -hmm. like an isometric view going on. Uh, I like the art style. There's yeah. longer gameplay online that I looked at that is cool. I would recommend checking out like a longer playthroughs because it's hard to like show mechanics of like choice in a two minute trailer. Yeah, yeah, that looks, yeah. It looks interesting. Uh, next game they had was my friend Pedro, my friend Pedro, uh, which I believe they showed off last E three at uh, E three uh, at the Revolver yeah. conference. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my friend, yeah. my friend Pedro, uh, you kind of you know you're you have two you dual wield. You can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Uh, looks yeah. fun coming to um, Switch very soon, June. Yeah, that game looks awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm definitely playing. I, that that's games. one of my favorite games. It looks show. so cool. You're, uh, I should I should mention like there's a sentient. Sentient banana, Why banana. Who is who is the Pedro that you are a friend of? Yes, that's what it's Very all about. Point. I didn't realize that it didn't have a console announced until now. You did that? Yeah, no, they it was, didn't. That is no, this yeah, exclusive. So coming yeah, to Switch, it's on Switch and PC. Oh, yeah, okay. Switch and PC. So this is the first time they said Switch is it's coming to console with Switch. So yeah, very cool. That's um, sweet. Neo Cab. So Neo Cab is. Uh, Another very narrative-driven game. Uh, they describe it as an emotional survival game about staying human in a world. Of... So whatever. Uh, <laughs> basically, though, you're you're a cabbie, right? You're driving people around. You talk to them. You uh, lots of cool stuff going on there. Uh, they they specifically mention they have a very diverse cast of characters, with, uh, which is cool. Diversity yeah. is cool. Um, I do like future. I mean, it's, I mean, you're in like Blood Runner, Blood Runner dystopia, where it's just like Blade you know. Runner. Blade Runner. I'm sorry. Blade thank you. Yeah. I'm sorry. Very Blade Runner esque. Uh, but that was yeah. But I mean, you know, and this is one of those things that lives and dies by like the writing. You're right. So yeah. it's hard to know whether yeah. or not you're going to enjoy. Visual it style looks cool. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It, uh, it looks oh. really slick. I will mm -hmm. give it that. Uh, the Red Lantern. So we have the Red Lantern. You mentioned that one was the game they mentioned. We already did. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's the first one. I made. That's why I got confused as well. I was like. Uh, <laughs> I was like, can I just give a whole take on the wrong yeah. game? I, was like, <laughs> I meant, I meant Darkwood. Sorry, Darkwood. Darkwood. So Darkwood's yeah. a game that's already on PC. Uh, actually, got a lot of critical acclaim for being one of the best horror games out there. Actually, from what I've seen, uh, mm. has a huge following on PC. Came out in 2017. Uh, it's coming to Switch this year uh, in May, very soon. So, if you're into horror, that looks very cool. Um, mm -hmm. Otherwise, oh. next game is Katana Zero. Katana uh -huh. Zero is a game that I've seen get a lot of hype in general. So it it's a nin you, you start as a ninja. Kind of gives me Hotline Miami vibes, yeah. where you can uh, basically you kill things pretty much in one hit, but also you die in was, one hit, right? I was yeah. like that, and it also feels like um. Did you guys ever play Samurai Gun? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was thinking yeah. yeah. that too. It feels a lot yeah. like that game too. Yeah, it has a very Samurai Gun feeling, except instead instead of a single screen uh, fighting each other, you this is a. Uh, I was, yeah, I was, I was, yeah, I was, I was gonna make the comparison to Super Meat Boy. 
Because it's just like one hit, you're dead, and you have to start a level over again and just try and rush through it as quickly as possible. Hmm. Mm. Uh, there's an interesting thing going on here, narratively, uh, but yeah. also gameplay yeah. wise. So, in between missions, you you know you've murdered a lot of people. Well, you got to sit through and talk about that with your therapist. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was kind. Of, that was kind of weird. That, I, I wasn't that, sure how much I was into that. No, I was. I, I'm so that's when I was extremely. That. Yeah. I was very cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, and t- I think that's part of what gives me the Hotline Miami vibe because in yeah. Hotline Miami, in the in in the intermissions, you were just kind. Of, your character on the phone with the guy. would often process what the hell he just mm-hmm. did, right? Yeah, yeah. in the uh, weirdest way. <laughs> yeah, in yeah. the weirdest ways, for yeah. sure. That, uh, that it, game was really weird. But, but this game, so actually, good. and I, so I looked at some gameplay of it. Um, the therapist stuff, though, actually has gameplay implica- implications. Because, oh. for example, uh, what, during one of your therapy sessions, the hotel manager will come in and be like, Hey, are you that ninja that's been killing everyone? Uh, <laughs> and then you, you can answer, I'm just a cosplayer. Right. Good answer. Uh, later down the line, when you're actually playing a level, some people will stop you. Be like, "Hey, uh, wh- who are you? You, if you answer, you're a cosplayer." Uh, again, basically, the manager of the hotel will come running in and be like, "Hey, no, yeah, he's a cosplayer. Like, I can, I can vouch, <laughs> vouch for him." Oh wow, uh, very good. And you can basically skip that whole section of enemies uh, hmm. because of that. Well, what if you just want to kill everyone? I mean, yeah, you know, <laughs> you can do that too. Yeah, you could do that too. But so uh, it seems like the choices you uh, use actually have an effect on the levels you play, and that seems very interesting. So mm-hmm. cool. um, that's coming out April eighteenth. I should say Cuphead also coming out April eighteenth. There's soon. a lot of stuff oh, that's wow, pretty wow, close. Wow, yeah, man, wow. so much anxiety. April eighteenth is a great day. Yeah, there's too many goddamn <laughs> games coming. Out. April's <laughs> full. We we were like, oh, there's nothing in April. It all starts in summer. Nope. And then, Good nope. thing I already played and beat Cuphead. I don't have to. Yeah, so you can just well, get Katana Zero. Uh, I kind of want to. And so that's coming to PC and Switch. What a chill out. Uh, rad. So rad is the next. Uh, yeah. This Double game Fine. Is the next frame, game from Double yeah. Fine. Uh, it's a basically a mutation. This game's all about mutations, right? Uh, sometimes your head will pop off, and you could use your head as a weapon. Uh, sometimes <laughs> oh, <yeah>. your <laughs> your arm. You'll get weird tree legs. Um, yeah, a lot of weird mm-hmm. things going on, and basically mm-hmm. each mutation has a gameplay element to yeah. it. Um, this game reminds me so much of Zelda. I don't know. Really? Yeah, like interesting. Link to the Past. Huh. Like, yeah. yeah, it just feels like that game. But, I mean, not in, you know, all the tone. No, not in tone. Like, no, 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 yeah, yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but, like, gameplay-wise. Yeah, sure, yeah. sorry. I, 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 I can see that. And so the developer, uh, by the way. It is procedurally generated. Um, uh, constantly changing. But, yeah, the it's cool. Right? Double developer, fine. Double yeah, Fine. Yeah, Double Fine makes yeah. me happy. Yeah, I mentioned the that. Yeah. Have <laughs> but I want to mention, uh-huh. we talked about a Double Fine game on the Game Club. <laughs> Oh, it's true. We did. Psychonauts, yeah. check it out. Listen, we, well, listen we to just the Psychonauts played it. Game Club episode. We just played it. Pretty recently. Hey, um, uh, Tim Schafer, you're our friend. Why don't you just send us some uh, <laughs> some early builds of Rad and we'll play it. <laughs> Maybe exactly. yeah. Good luck. We uh, played. We played. We gave Psychonauts a good grade. We we talked real good things about that game. All right, you're, you you know, owe us, coward. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. You owe us. We're supposed yeah. to sweet talk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> no, it's turned yeah, into right. Um so so I should mention that's coming out this summer. Uh mm-hmm. next game to talk about was Creature in the Well. And I have to say this yeah. game is not that name is not descriptive of what the hell no, this game not is at all. No. Uh so this is a hack and slash pinball game. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, this was a weird one. I, I love this I one. I like this I, one. I'm into a lot. it too. Yeah, so we'll yeah. tell me a little bit about it. Talk to me about Well, me it's a Pinball hack and slash. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to describe, right? Like, it, it, hack and slash pinball, you say that, but what the hell does that mean, right? I think you really have to see what... Now what all I is. imagine is just the uh, ball bouncing around, jump, like, on bumpers, kind of and every like, time it bounces into something, it's just like a slash, <laughs> like, slicing something in half. It kind of is that. Yeah. Like, basically, you have your sword attack that you can use, but there's balls that are bouncing around the arenas, and you can hit them like, like, like it would be a pinball, and it'll go flying based off of the angle where you hit it. And it, yeah. and you, it seems like you do more damage yeah. through that. So in yeah. some ways, it's, you're positioning yourself, not just you and the enemy, but also where the balls are in relation to it you and the like, enemy. Yeah, it and seems so like that, using these balls would be a way in which you solve, solve the pro- puzzles and progress the dungeons that you're in. Like, there were parts where it was mm-hmm. like you had to yeah, like, use your balls. time a swing to hit a ball into like a particular point in order to like progress or like yeah. solve a particular puzzle. It 
also a great yeah, aesthetic. It looks fantastic. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks really good. It looks nice. Very good aesthetic. Um, so uh, that's coming out this summer. Uh, next game they talked about was Blood Roots. Uh, Blood Roots is another top down action game. Uh, you have a wolf on top of you. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, this one. Yes. Yeah. And, and basically, like, the. the very frenetic, very frantic paced game, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're just constantly whacking at things, you're constantly jumping around and just uh, doing all sorts of crazy co- combos yeah. seem to be a very big yeah. deal here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so. Like, it's for, like, like, speaking of, once again, to invoke Hotline Miami, but yeah. like, it's the whole combo yeah. thing, like, know where every enemy is going to be popping out, where every piece of the environment is, and just string together this thing where you're never stopping the entire way through the level, basically. Which is yeah, cool. essentially. And I love that. I love Hotline Miami. By the way, just port Hotline Miami to Switch, please. Um, <laughs> never stop, never stop. That, the aesthetic sure. reminds me of it also style, seems like a little bit. The yeah. art style? Yeah, I can, I can see, see it a ton. Yeah, I can yeah. see that. That's another game coming out in summer, by the way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we got a pretty packed yeah. summer, I gotta say. Uh, pretty packed basically every month of the year. Uh, <laughs> um, no rest. Next up, we had Pine. So Pine is the one game I'm actually kind of negative on. Yeah, so I, yeah, like I could the, give a fuck the, about the, this. The best, <laughs> the best way I could describe this is it, it's very reminiscent of Breath of the Wild. Uh, except but, there's a lot of furry characters. You don't play as the furry characters. But no, you play as the one human. For the record, this is not why we hate No, no, no. That's not why we hate no, it. No, no, no. In <laughs> fact, <laughs> I think... Is, I is think that it performs be, very badly? I just, I, yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I just wanted to make that clear yeah, yeah, yeah. so people yeah. didn't no, think but, we were but, like... Uh, and so while while the concept actually looks pretty interesting, like, you know, in the Breath of the Wild, like, it, it just looks like it runs very poorly and there's just... Yeah. It, it did a weird thing, which is it had a trailer at the start that was, like, this sort of scenario where it's like these two things these like this elk guy and these lizard guys are going to fight and then you intervene and i was like you know this looks all right but then i realized that was actually like a weird cg trailer like it wasn't in game but it looked very close to what a game could actually look like yeah and it was so i was sort of like i was like i was like you know this looks pretty okay and then the actual gameplay started and i was like this is like this is like 15 rough. fps and, and truth be told this is kind of the only one that i've seen like negative stuff on uh from this whole showcase but yeah i mean that's till august so maybe they'll have a chance yeah to maybe they'll have time to polish it out. maybe time to make it cool and maybe there's a cool hook to it that we haven't seen yet right yeah um Next, there's a trio of games coming from Vlambeer. So, uh, Vlambeer, if you don't know, is uh, founded by, co-founded by Rami Ismail, who is uh-huh. very outspoken on Twitter, uh, especially when it comes very to online. indie games, uh, just indie rights, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> he had a good interview this week. Where yes. he was, where, where they were asking about Epic Game Store exclusives, and he just goes, "Suck it, Valve. It sucks to be you." <laughs> that was his response, and you're like, "Wow." <laughs> well, well I, and to be, to give credit to him, there was yes. a lo- much longer, far more nuance he, there. But that was that was in, in the which thing he talks about how Steam has kind of abandoned indies and whatnot. But yeah, I, I mean, so but yeah, like he said, he's I very he very long. outspoken about like indie games and how they should be promoted and whatnot on yeah. Twitter. So good it's, Twitter follow. Uh, but so supposed to be a really, really good mobile game, or iOS game. Yeah, I mean, so let, let me uh, tell you oh, the shit, sorry. Are coming. So Super Crate Box. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Super Crate Box. Uh, there's a new two-player co-op mode exclusive to the Switch. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so like Saf says, it, 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 it was very well-received. It's a very arcade-ish game, right? Yeah. That was on yeah. mobile. Um, tight controls, all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Then they're also putting out... Uh, nuclear Throne. It was actually a Shadow Drop. Mm-hmm. Uh, nuclear Throne. So Nuclear Throne is... Uh, oh, I should say Super Crate Box coming out in April, by the way. Yes. Uh, nuclear Throne is a game that if you've ever played Enter the Gungeon, Enter the Gungeon is very oh, much inspired by this game. I love Enter the Gungeon. The so yeah. and, also, and also I've played this game. Yeah, yeah so, also, so yeah. Uh, very similar to that game. Uh, very very well received it has glowing reviews on steam and and on metacritic whatnot it's uh, really good it, it, mm-hmm. it's it's one of the games that a lot of people have been streaming where's the switch version <laughs> so finally here and out today yeah gungeon uh, did like a million and a half copies on switch get this baby on here like yeah smart yeah, call yeah, yeah. <laughs> and finally vlambeer arcade so basically vlambeer arcade is going to be a growing catalog of like shorter smaller mm-hmm. bite-sized games mm-hmm. uh starting with a game called ultra bugs uh, but yeah, basically, basically this, it's just 
it's like a not mini game collection but like you know like an Smaller. arcade collection you could say yeah of, which is funny because i mean he talked about this on twitter earlier this year we mentioned it because it ties into this he, basically saying he wanted the land beer has gotten a little bit more well known than a lot of indie developers right and so he wanted to pay it forward by basically saying like hey the arcade would be a thing where it wouldn't just be Vlam beer games. It would be anyone that just has a game idea that doesn't want to have to like take it to this huge thing that costs 20 bucks. Like we just like make this game in a couple months. It's a good concept. Put it out. The Vlam beer arcade is a place where you can look to help put it on there to help raise awareness of it basically. Um, yeah. Which is cool. So, I mean, yeah, that's a very neat thing. Yeah. It's a, definitely a very neat thing. Uh, yeah. Uh, all those games are coming pretty soon. Uh, one of them's already out. So, Cool, yeah. cool that, and it's cool to have Lambier on here because, like I said, like this is a guy who's very like, hey, uh, if he's endorsing the switch, you, you know that that probably says a good thing about. <laughs> the if they had bad business practices, he would yeah. not be here. That's yeah. sort of the thought, right? Like, yeah. Essentially, uh, next next up is Swim Sanity, which is a dual stick uh, or twin stick shooter uh, that is underwater mm-hmm. uh, arcade shooter. Yeah. Yeah. Looks interesting. interesting. Four player. Yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I'd be down to play it if you guys want to play it. Looks, looks kind of cool. I like the Henry really like the uh, the art style that yeah. much, but it's it looks a little fun. flash. But yeah, I just yeah. really care yeah. for that game. But if you guys want to play it, I'm a sucker for friendship, so I can try it out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, a sucker for friendship. Another yeah, shadow know. drop, though. We had one more shadow drop. Blaster Master Zero Two, awful name, but so this is the uh, <laughs> sequel to Blaster Master Zero, which was a remake of the original Blaster I Master. Love Blaster Master Zero. Um, so oh, it's, yeah. it's Blast- Darling and the Frank characters in it. Uh, yeah, does it? <laughs> no, uh, I was like, because they had Shovel Knight and Shantae, so I was like, no, you know, anything is possible. It's called Zero Two. I was making. Oh, it. okay, you did it. You got me. <laughs> so, so Blaster Master Zero was uh, it came out a week after the Switch launched. Mm-hmm. Uh, to uh, l- very beloved, a lot of people like it. Very oh, cool yeah. remake. It was um, real good. And yeah. I, I bought this one already. But I have yeah, I did yeah. Too, but cool, I cool to see a sequel and cool to see it shout out. You know? Yeah, and, it and looks Indie really good. Create, Indie Creates is good. one of those people who ha- had been supporting the 3DS for a good while now. A lot of cool eShop games. And they've continued that onto Switch. And it's nice to see them. Nice to see them keep getting the spotlight, you know? Uh, yeah. 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 I love Indie Creates. They're awesome. Yeah, cool, cool guys. Uh, then finally, before we move on to the final topic of the day... Stranger Things three, the game. Uh, so this one, the movie, the game. I, I, so I'm wondering. The movie, the game. I'm wondering if this was a happy coincidence or. No, I'm extremely confident that it's not. <laughs> no, so the Nindy Showcase aired the same day that Stranger Things uh, 3's release date, uh, or at least a trailer new, dropped. Uh, a it, new yeah. trailer dropped, uh, and they announced that hey, Stranger Things three, the game is gonna come out the same day. As Independence Day, July fourth, baby. Yes. July 4th and this game so uh, what I didn't realize they had already done a Stranger Things game in this style on mobile excuse uh, me yeah it's mm. it, it's completely there's no monetization um oh. it and, and it it's gotten really good reviews actually a lot of people like it and this is a sequel to that I actually did not realize cool. that so it's a, it's yeah Cool, cool thing, and it's cool to see a tie-in like this, right? It's cool to see a tie-in that looks very different from the actual yeah. game, you know. It but does. kind of reminiscent it looks of so what a weird game compared to this to yeah. the actual show. Yeah, I mean, like, like totally and vaguely retro inspired, and a lot of Stranger Things is sort of tied into that whole, you know, like yeah, yeah. like the eighties. But I played if if hmm. anybody wants to play. Yeah, yeah. Local co a local co op, little isometric like brawler puzzle game reminded me of Goof Troop a little bit on the uh, SNES. Uh, Which, uh, yeah, yeah. Yo, Goof Troop. That game is dope. Goof Troop's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's uh, coming to Switch on July fourth. Uh, I don't know if we knew platforms before this, so we at least know it's coming to Switch. Uh, mm-hmm. I imagine it's coming to everything though. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's all the games they talked about. Uh, what? Then they. No. Yeah. One more thing. Yes. So they had one last thing. Uh, you kind of hear the music coming in. Q- uh, goes into a trailer. And uh, you see a Crypt of the Necrodancer sequel from the makers of Crypt of the De- Necrodancer has the same main character. You're like, oh, cool, Crypt of the Necrodancer too, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, the music starts coming in, and then you start hearing a dun 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 dun, dun and you're like, mm, what? What? Do they, do they have a Zelda Zelda music going on? What's what's happening? And then uh, Link and Zelda are playable in this game. This is a full on 
uh, this is not DLC. This no. is not um, this is not like a side content for Crypto Nectar Dancer 2. This is straight up a crossover between the franchises. Cadence it's in of Hyrule. Hyrule. Yeah, it's uh, Cadence of Hyrule. Uh, Crypto of the ne- Crypt of the Necro Dancer featuring the Legend of Zelda. Long name. Uh, <laughs> yes. Way too long. A lot going on there. Uh, yeah, but I mean, so let's talk about this. This is, I mean, uh, w- with Cuphead, this is the other standout announcement of the show, right? Yeah, I mean, for sure. So there's a lot to talk about here. First of all, an indie developer is making a Zelda game. This is, I mean, forget exactly. Zelda. This is unprecedented yeah. for Nintendo, right? Mm. We, we've seen Nintendo give their IPs to people like Ubisoft and Koei Tecmo. Um, even Capcom has made some Zelda games, right? But like for an indie developer to be making a Zelda game, that is, this is crazy. This is a huge step forward for for Nintendo and their stance on indies and their strategy. Um, Would you call it a Zelda game? I'm a little hesitant to call uh, it a Zelda it's game. It's a Zelda spin. I mean, yeah, so spin-off, like, yeah. I, it's a, like what they, yeah. I mean, they already did it with like Hyrule Warriors. Like they gave it to the Koi. Well, yeah, but that's, I don't know. That's not an indie. No, that's not an indie. But I mean, but like, li- but the Hyrule and, Warriors was even... taking like surface level. I mean, it's, it's interesting. We'll see how the game ends up. But Hyrule mm. Warriors is taking the core of Dynasty Warriors and like applying like, oh, there's items from the Zelda stuff. Yeah. And yeah. But then it's like, We're, that's what they're doing but, with Crypto no, The main so no, no, gameplay no, no. So, is Crypto Neko Dancer, hold, isn't it? Hold, hold, no, no, no. Hold on. So let me let me talk about that. So uh, IGN had an interview with these guys and they wanted to be clear. This is as much of a crypto. This is very much blending these two IPs together. It's not it's not just a Zelda game, right? But it I think unlike Hyrule Warriors, which was basically Dynasty Warriors with a with Zelda skin, this is very much taking Zelda elements. And so let's talk about what those are, right? There's an overworld okay. in this game. There are dungeons uh in this game that you can find in the overworld. Uh, um so they uh and of course it's set in Hyrule, there's Zelda enemies, there's Zelda items, uh and I mean like in a lot of ways, this kind of plays like a rhythm-based top-down Zelda game, though, right? Because, like, it, it has the same perspective, it has, you know, the same basic actions, right? Uh, Which granted, is just this basically is, move with the beat. Uh, That's the core yeah. mechanic of Crypto the Necro Dancer. Granted, this is just, yeah, more rhythm-focused yeah. and more action-focused, right? And Crypto the Necro Dancer was a roguelike, uh, right? It's yes. very run-based. I mean, we don't know about the specifics of this, but it seems like this game is less run-based than that game is, right? Where, like... Yeah, and so it'll, yeah, but you still you still move around to the beat like you can't yes, really 100%. move around. It's yeah. just they have added added elements to the game, right? Yeah. So I mean, I think uh, like I, I mean, but like like the developer themselves uh, described this, right? This is very much a blending of the two games. Like this is not just a Zelda skin, right? This mm. is like uh, it it feels like a really nice mixture of both, and that's cool to see. You know, this is very cool to see. It's coming out soon, spring twenty nineteen. Uh, good synergy, by the way, with Link's Awakening by use uh, the Link's Awakening Telltale using, Heights. using that Telltale Heights, uh, which I mean Zelda. works because Telltale Heights is inspired to make you think it's going to go into the main Zelda theme at the very start of that song, and then it goes into this weird different thing, and like it's kind of representative of what this whole game is, right? Like it's yes. like it's this weird side thing that like clearly is taking inspiration, but is his own. D- thing and i think that's cool it's a cool the song lines up well mm. with what it it's is it's very cool yeah and, and gorgeous okay. by the way i love yeah. crypto necro uh, dancer i thought that was an amazing game and i'm so glad that this this company is getting uh you know nintendo's trust uh, uh-huh. in this way and it looks and amazing if, so far like and if you think the pixel art is good there might be a reason uh, a step above crypto the necro dancer there might be a reason for that because two of the artists that worked on sonic mania oh, uh, oh shit yeah, yeah they, they I'm doing the sprite this. work for this game. And uh, Danny also, B. Uh, yeah, I was about to say, gosh. I want to give a shout out to Danny B, who is the composer of the original Super Meat Boy and Binding of Isaac, plus Crypto the Necrodancer, of course. This guy, 15 years ago, put out a remix online for Gerudo Valley, just a fan <laughs> remix. 15 years later, here he is being able to, uh, to compose an official yeah. Zelda soundtrack. What a, what a world, right? Yeah, what a world. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yeah, and so I th- so uh, so we talked about the game a little bit, but I do want to talk about what this means for Nintendo and Indies, right? Wait, can I just um, say one one more thing about the game? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We can, uh, I, mean, we I just want to talk about uh, Zelda. Like her move set seems to be inspired by Smash, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah we it see looks... Nehru's love. We see Din's fire. Fire. but she's also using a sword. That's pretty cool. correct. Yeah. I thought that was pretty sweet. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. I mean, it's cool, and and I mean, I think, and you touched on something. Uh, Zelda. I mean, playable Zelda is yeah. not something we see often, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's only in the spinoffs. I mean, yes. and I guess Phantom Hourglass, kind of Phantom Hourglass, Spirit Tracks, kind of. Movies. But like, 
We're going to talk about spirit yeah. tracks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but, but, but it's, it's cool like to said, see, because like Hyrule Warriors is something because there's like 30 characters. Or yes. Whatever, right? But it's cool to see a game where like Link and Zelda are like yeah. of equal importance. That's a very, very you know? thing. Is um, Groose in there? Cool. Groose should be there. Oh, come There's, on. He's never well, coming back. Well, there is going to be DLC on one Impa. Impa the me Impa well, in this game. Well, we don't know if there's going to be DLC. Didn't they say that? I thought they said that no, DLC. they did not. Okay. They didn't. They didn't All right. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, I imagine there's going to be, because there was for Crypt of the Necrodancer. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's safe to assume, but who knows. Um, maybe mm. they'll do a snipper clips thing, right? Uh, where they release a retail release mm. with DLC packaged in later. Uh, sure. Who knows? Um, you got time for but that. But yeah, one. anything else to say about the game itself, though? Um, yeah, okay. uh, yeah, I haven't played it. Yeah, <laughs> well, well, it's coming out very soon. I wish they give it a real date, but we know it's coming soon enough, right? Spring. Yeah. They, they, they can only it's mean only so we're practically months. in spring right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 We literally yeah. are in spring. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, I mean, so this Nindy showcase, right? Let's talk about the Nindy showcase in general. I mean, two big, big announcements, right? In Cuphead and Crypt and uh, Cadence of Hyrule. Mm-hmm. Uh, with just also a general array of fantastic yeah. games to show, right? Uh, so, what do you guys think overall? Give me your give me your review. I'm so <laughs> full of anxiety, I can't handle all these games. It was a good show. Like I like that. I um, like the fact that uh, Nintendo is actually uh, continuing the effort to support indie developers and kind of like trying to show yes. people like, look, the system is full of games. You just need to look for it, and there's some good stuff there. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's good to see it, it, they are very proactive, right? When yeah. it comes to indies, and they want you. Not only are they trying to get this content on their platform, but they want to promote this content, right? They want you to. They want to show it to the world that hey, like indie games, these are a big thing. And not only are they a big thing that we're giving them their own showcase, right? But also we're giving them one of our yeah. biggest IPs now. You know, yeah. I feel um, like. I feel like Nintendo was traumatized from the drop. <laughs> yeah, oh, definitely. They just, they just need all the, <laughs> all the indie games. Fill in games. those gaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but no, it's good to see. You know, yeah, I mean, even in, a year, even in a year like 2019 where Nintendo themselves has so much to release, right? Uh, they still have time to uh, really put these indie games in the spotlight. And, that's, yeah. that's and I think that there was a healthy amount of variety to it. Because last Indie Direct, there, or last Indies Showcase, whatever, there was a, there was like four different games that are like, here's four player competitive yeah. couch games. Sing, single screen, like, single like, screen. like there was like four yeah. games that looked like Samurai Gun, essentially. Yes, uh, yeah. In the, in the last Indie Showcase. We're like, with this one, it's sort of like, Wasn't man, like, Samurai Gun too? <laughs> I think that was one yeah, of that was announced. <laughs> that was literally one of them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, then there were, and then there was like the game where you have a hat. Anyways, this time, like pretty much every game is like it feels like it's from a different genre entirely, you know. And that's cool. Like it's there's there's such a nice variety. And they did a big indie sale after, which they they plugged, and I I was like, you know what? I'm feeling like getting some indies. I got a gift card. I bought like bang. three indie games. I was like, bang, dang, you got me. So that's yeah. That's yeah all so I wanted to I'll, yeah I was gonna touch on that real quick. So in their effort to support indies, not only they did a sale, right, and uh, they released. Uh, top 10 list of the best-selling indie games, uh, which include games like Hollow Knight, Undertale, uh, Blanked. Uh, <laughs> Stop time. Great. <laughs> it's Stardew uh, number oh, one. But like, no, but like Overcooked, Overcooked 2, Enter the Gungeon, uh, Dead Cells, and other games like that. And it, it's cool to see that, like, you know, these games are finding success. On what was number board. one? Uh, they didn't say what was number one, but Stardew what? Valley's on there. Uh, they didn't, it wasn't ordered. It wasn't the oh, ordered list. Oh, yeah. boo. Uh, but both Overcooked games are on that list. And uh, I'm missing cool. one. Yeah. Oh, Golf Story. Golf, golf Story and Graceful Explosion golf Machine. Story. That's Shut up to Golf Story. <laughs> yeah, Golf Story. Oh, and golf Celeste. Story. Sorry, <laughs> and Celeste. Celeste. Yo, fuck I'm off. I'm surprised the messenger <laughs> right. isn't on there. Uh, I mean, but I mean, that's to say all these games are like mega hits, but even the games yeah. that are not on the bestsellers list. Mm-hmm. Are, I mean, we know that Gungeon passed one and a half million, and it's not on that list. So we know all oh, these and, things and Gun- are at least above that. Mm. Yeah, I'm mean, Gungeon's on the list. Gungeon's oh. in the top ten. But it's well, like, thanks. <laughs> thanks for saying that out loud, Muzuno. I thought I did, but okay. maybe you did. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, but that's one of the newest additions to the list, right? It wasn't on there last year. Uh, it's one that like yeah. slowly, slowly, slowly sells. Um, and but like every single week, we are hearing a new, uh, you know, 
essentially every week you hear a new success story of hey like our game did the best on switch it it, we made our budget back in a day we outsold the other versions eight to one you know that kind of thing yeah and and it's not just these mega hits it's every it's even the stuff that's not even showing up in the top 30 right yeah is uh and so so, yeah yeah, switch is a very healthy place for indies and we did it I mean, the, plat- the platform fits it well. You know, make it yeah. sound, it just, it works. Yeah, I mean, but I don't think it's everything, right? Like, the platform is well suited for it, right? Like, those are games that you want to play handheld naturally, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Nintendo themselves is being very proactive about it. It's easy to develop for it. Like, there's just so much going for it. So. Yeah. And and then, of course, like, I think these Nindy showcases are instrumental, right? Like, putting out the best content there is out in the for- out in front of a million eyes. This this Nindy showcase had a million video on demand views, you know? So, so, so yeah. what Nintendo yeah, prompt cool do you thing. want to see given to an, an indie developer? What indeed? Uh, the I'm Celeste people you. make <laughs> Ice Climbers 3. Oh my god. <laughs> There's not even an Ice Climbers 2. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? We're skipping. That? This is gonna... We're, the, the 2 is the missing chapter. You're gonna, you're gonna fill that in I later. See, it's like Star Wars. Yeah, it's a yeah, thing. I want to see actually be given to Shin Studios who did Fast Hour Next. It we they're knows. supposed to be doing something. We haven't heard from them since that RMX came out. Who knows? Maybe fit. Who knows? Captain Batman will make a return. <laughs> Hope so. One day. One day. All right. Now let's run through the final bit of news we got for today. Uh, oh, so first thing, uh, the Epic Game Store. Still more fucking news. Now, a little bit. Just a little bit left. Holy shit. Uh, <laughs> shit. So, Epic Game Store. Epic Game Store announced oh, a whole bunch of, of new exclusives coming to the platform. Yeah. Uh, uh, but the ones I want, the one, there's three games I want to touch upon. Um, okay. Which is. Heavy Rain. <laughs> okay. That was, that was a long <laughs> pause. Oh, I, pause I, I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I was going with suspense. <laughs> I thought, you didn't say no. anything, it could have been edited out. No, All right. <laughs> no we're leaving that in. He- Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and Detroit Become oh, Human. I am fucking, so yeah. glad those are coming. Uh, I can finally uh, play them. Uh, oh, you wow. you want to play them? Interesting. Yes. That's one, not out, the... one out of three ain't bad. Uh, <laughs> um, are, I mean, so for the most part, these games are pretty divided, right? Uh, <laughs> but uh, what's yeah. interesting here, I mean, overall probably positive, but um, I think what's interesting here is these are Sony published games exclusive and to playstation right yeah and this isn't the first time we've seen this epic games also uh got that game journey. company's trilogy on there a flow flower journey mm-hmm. now we're seeing this here uh this is a crazy thing i mean th- this is the kind of content that like uh it, it, it's nice to see epic not only go after the big names because they also announced stuff like the outer worlds and control and spellbrook uh are gonna be and phoenix point are gonna be exclusive so they're seeking out obviously stuff that's popular on pc but it's interesting to see that they're also trying to go after games that have never even been on the platform you know uh-huh. I, um, I had no idea journey was re-released that's cool i was thinking yeah. Yeah, not yet it's coming but they yeah that was the un- announced three months ago that they and and that's another game that Sony published, you know. And it's pretty so, crazy that Sony. I and mean, this is this is the first time they're doing this with PC games, right? I think that we're just saying the console makers are truly sort of viewing PC now as like not a com- not a not a com- not in competition. Not competition. Yeah, yeah, it's a which is smart. Market. It, it yeah. isn't. Um. Yeah. So that's interesting to point out. Uh, also, Metro Exodus sold two and a half times the previous Metro game, uh, um, which was exclusive to the Epic Game Store. So, yeah. that's, uh, that's a good for Metro. Good for Metro. Um, all right, and then the final piece of news: uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines hey. Two. Yeah. Uh, so this is uh, may not be a big deal to you, maybe, but uh, this is a huge cult classic, mm-hmm. right? Uh, released in like two thousand four or so. Uh, yeah. It's getting a sequel, published by Paradox. Um, they had a big old stream to talk about it. It's coming mm-hmm. out March twenty twenty to PS four, Xbox One, and PC. It's one of those yeah. games that like it gets a, it gets a lot of thing for having choice before a lot of games were really pushing that uh, yes. it was 2004 and also the writing's generally considered very good and the general scenario I played like an hour of it back when on PC and I enjoyed that stuff but it's cool because you know it's one of those sequels that people thought wasn't going to happen yeah uh, so, they had, uh, those those things are always nice to see you know they had a weird hour long performance art piece before they announced it where like a guy who was clearly a vampire was on stage being like join tinder our new dating app and i was like did they make the right this before the actual tinder what happened the fuck uh 
and then this lady got turned into a vampire on stage. It was very silly, but then they announced the game at the end, and I was like, you know what? Okay, all right. What the fuck is going on? Just, they're feeling wild. That's it was weird. a wild thing. All oh. right. It's and good for the fans. The final piece of How news. many finals? There's been three I mean, not, final pieces was, of news. Yeah, what no, the fuck? Yeah, so was, there's not really final, no, 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 are they? I, my brain didn't work. I meant we're <laughs> done with the news. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. We're, I, is look, wrapped up. The final Final Fantasy VII. No, no, no. We're, yeah, the, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII. Um, yeah. Yeah, no. So we're done with the news. Um, now we have to go to our final segment, is what I meant to say. Before you interrupted me, <laughs> the list. The list. Yeah. The list. The list. Oh, list. I'm not used to having Jesus. to do that. <laughs> so, you didn't. You didn't scream it out. Yeah. The list. This week, uh, you our... never host. Never host again. Right. If you can't scream the list. I, you look, can't host. I was going to, but then you yelled at me about the new. You know, I don't want to talk about this. <laughs> I'm adding a game to the list. <laughs> so, Will William is adding a game to the list. Uh, what That's is it, why William? Saf left. Brandon, yeah, because <laughs> Saf refuses to engage on the list. Uh, Brandon, last Rank- yes. Rankomania two is coming up. What was what was I your agree. decision you made last Rankomania? Uh, my decision last Rankomania was to move Dang and Rampa down. Well, no, not that, but to make it right was what you said. We're gonna Uh-oh. make it uh, right. Make, oh boy, to make things right. Yes, oh. that's, yeah, you generally. said in that loud in the past when we finished the recording. You know what? We look like we hate the series more than we do. It's been name dropped on this podcast. We're going to make it right. Let's give that blue hedgehog his due. I want to add Sonic Mania to the list. Oh, Sonic baby. Mania. A good wow. Sonic yeah. Mania. Mania. So tell me a little bit about Sonic Mania, William. Okay, Sonic Mania. It is... Sega forgot how to make a Sonic game, so the fans decided they were going to do it. It's <laughs> true. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a group of people who who were just in the community making fan mods. Sega came and said, hey, do you want to make this retro... Uh, Sonic inspired game and they said yes gladly and these guys get it they get what makes that blue blur as fun as it was when it came out originally uh, the game is sort of half and half uh, remixes of old levels and then new zones so even though you may go through the chemical plant zone there will be a bunch of stuff that you don't recall that your first run through um, but I'll, I actually like the new zones the most of that game they really uh, are, are wonderful levels that have all the multifaceted branching paths that make a good Sonic level makes for good replayability um, wonderful soundtrack it looks great uh, just it was a thing that like I, I liked Sonic as a kid for a multitude of different reasons but it, you know it's hard to feel affectionate when two, three of the games that are in hell right now are Sonic games <laughs> uh, and so I, you know, Sonic Mania is good and that's why I want to I wanna show that there, we have the capacity to enjoy Sonic the Hedgehog and that's, that's why true. it should be right above Shadow the Hedgehog. Awesome. <laughs> Don't you do that to me. Yeah, I talked about this game actually on our uh, Thanksgiving yeah, episode yeah. when we talked about yes. uh, games that we were thankful about. To be honest with you, I meant to add this last time, but I forgot, so I just said Pokemon Channel. Uh, <laughs> so that's why you added that game. <laughs> well, yeah. William, where do you want it on the list? Well, I haven't played this game, so I have no idea. I've care? played it. I haven't beaten it though. So. I think it's the best Sonic game. I think it I'm is. Go out there I think, it's, I think it's my favorite 2D Sonic game. Uh, to be it, honest with. I mean, that's there's an argument to be had. For it's that, definitely yeah. like in line with the originals, like one, two, three. Is it better than two? Yes, uh, I think it is. I, 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 I like it's debatable, but it, the fact I think that I think the drop the dash quality. is really good. I think that yeah. Sorry, but anyways, I want to put it. I want to put it in like the mid twenties. Okay. Around like Okami, Mario Bros, Golden Knight, Shovel Knight, maybe up, maybe down a little bit. I'd but... put it above Mario Bros. I'll put, put it above, it above Mario Bros. Bros. We put it above Okami and Psychonauts. I mean, so it goes to be putting it above all the Fire Emblem Awakening, Danganronpa. I'd be good at putting it underneath Donkey Kong Country. I mean, I'm fine with putting I'm... it above those games. I think. I'm fine with putting it above Donkey Kong Country. I'm fine with putting <laughs> it above. No, I'm not. Uh, Donkey Kong Country mm. 2. I'm. Th- I, I, I think Sonic Mania is. I will keep it below Donkey Kong Country 2, Brand. I want to keep it below. Just uh, Donkey Kong Brandon. Country Don't 2 was where it's supposed to be. I'm gonna look. I'm I gonna go to bat. Rank of Mania is coming Mania. up, Brandon. You got I, that chance. I think. I think Sonic Mania is a better platformer than Donkey Kong Country 2. It's, it's not a better right. platformer. Like, way. No. Like, Donkey Kong Country 2 is way better than fucking Sonic in terms of platforming. Uh, it's like the best platformer possibly ever. 
but hard possibly ever <laughs> strong, but I I would put it below Donkey Kong. To and then you look Country up and you see Dave's some Kong. Mario Odyssey above it, it, it so it, I don't know how you say that. Don- no. <laughs> well, here's here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Okay, so do we want to put it above Melee? Platformer, we're, not putting above we're not putting it above Melee. We need to get help Saf out. <laughs> we're not putting it above DKZ2. Are we putting it above Melee, though? Yes. I'd be willing to put it, like, fucking at, like, number, like, 13 if it wasn't for Dark Country 2. The Mad? Oh, no, it's too high. <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't... Wait, so you put Dark Country 2 above, like, everything above 13? Dog, you have no Brandon, idea how much I love this is a lot. Rank a mania. Look out, brother. Game. Look out. He's a mad Well, man. I'm not because you guys will be This is the game. <laughs> Neither can afford to lose. Um, All right. Uh, Do- under Ethan, Gun Country 2. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm out, the, I'm out with the Beneath Iron Country 2. All right. I think we have that set. I got nothing. Well, fine, then. Well, apparently, my opinion doesn't matter. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? What do you want, Noah? What he's do you gonna, want? He's going to leave the podcast. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't need yeah, me. I'm gone. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's not, it's not like you'll be here next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, Noah, where did you want it? Is, is there, do you have any dissension? Yeah, I'll do, I'll do the, okay, Country 2 is fine. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to have his voice be heard. <laughs> so. Uh, coming in at number 23 is Sonic Mania, which... Sur- I can't wait uh, for Rank of Fuck. Speaking of Mania, I cannot wait for oh, Rank of Mania. Well, baby. you can talk about Rank of Mania after I tell you what is surrounding Sonic Mania. Oh, I'm just... I'm sorry. By the way, you can <laughs> follow the list by looking at the, play, the uh, pace oh, no. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Fucked it up. Uh, so 21, Ghost Trick. Number 22, Boom! Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest. Or Diddy Kong's Quest. I don't know. No, Diddy, Diddy Kong's Conquest. Quest. Nobody Diddy actually... Kong. Diddy no, Kong's been, Quest. We have it wrong. I'm pretty sure we have it wrong. Nobody knows. Uh, you can look on Google. And look Sonic Mania, number 23, <laughs> number 24, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and number 25, Psychonauts. Uh, hey. So that is the list, and that is this podcast. I'm still so happy uh, that Ghost Trick is that uh, high. Fucking <laughs> shot your mouth. <laughs> this is why I can't wait for fucking ranking me. I'm going to give the you, final Brandon. word. To William, because uh, he didn't get to host today, but he was he still came on board. Uh, in the meantime, while you think on that, William, uh, where can people find us? Tell us. Just run us through the whole thing. <laughs> Is this because you... <laughs> Alright, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. So if you want to find, you know, you've listened all the way through this podcast on your podcast service of choice, go open your phone or if you have an iPod, I don't know, dude, bring us five stars on whatever you got. Uh, after that, if you want to listen, go follow us on SoundCloud, follow us on Twitter, go to twitch.tv slash jump up supercast to find us. I stream Tetris 99 this week is the first time in a year that I've pressed that stream button. Uh, and then Brandon's one day going to get uh, Gower Plains. Besides that, we have a Facebook and an Instagram. We have a YouTube channel now. Well, we've had it, but Ills is uploading all the back catalog. So if you want a place where all that stuff is, check out youtube.com slash jump up supercast. Uh, that is uh, it. I don't know if this is normally where I say someone else's final phrase, but I didn't have time to think about it because moves made me also do this. So here's what we're going to do. All right. My final phrase. The future can be scary sometimes, right? You go out here and you got this guy saying that consoles that we love are going to die, all right? But here's the thing. If consoles aren't going to die, at least not in the, near, in the foreseeable future, but we are going to have this cool thing that, you know, now I can try a video game easier than I ever have before. Options are good. There's no reason to be out here wanting to hate new things just because they are new. Give it a shot. If it comes out and it's bad, then dunk on it. But until then... Have an open mind, why don't you? It'll make you happier.